Well, blessed Monday and Holy Week. As we gather together, we're going to take a brief little pause from the book of Revelation because uh, we are entering into the Holy of Holy Weeks that we are called to as believers. And on Monday, and each day has a theme to it, each day has a an event that's a tied to it, we remember Jesus' cleansing of the temple. But more importantly, we remember the dedication of the new temple, that is, the body of Christ. So we have both of these events, and they're really two different events, but they're tied together on this first Monday of Holy Week. So remember when Jesus, he didn't just go once, but we believe at least two or three times, challenged the um, exchange of um, animals, uh, challenged the exchange of money in the temple. Do not make my father's house a marketplace, Jesus said. And part of it was the revelation that he would be the new temple. He would be the new sacrifice. If we go through the door that Jesus is, at least that's the way it's described in John's gospel, we have access to relationship with God and we have eternal life. So sometimes we have the reading of Jesus cleansing the temple, which is what historically happened the next day after Jesus was welcomed on Palm Sunday. But we also have the story that took place the day before Palm Sunday, and that was the anointing of not only Jesus' body, but Jesus' feet by Mary. And so we have this in our story today, John 12. Um, And it is the story of anointing Jesus' feet. And I'm going to talk about the significance of that, how it ties into Jesus being the new temple, Jesus being the way, the truth, and the life. So let's hear the story of Mary anointing Jesus' feet. Six days before Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, the house of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. And there he gave a di- they gave a dinner for him. Martha served, and Lazarus was the one who was at the table with him. Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard, anointed Jesus' feet, and wiped them with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of the disciples, the one who was about to betray him, said, Why has this perfume not been sold for three hundred denarii and the money given to the poor? He said this not because he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and he kept the common purse and used to steal what was put in it. Jesus said, Leave her alone. She bought it so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. Now, there's been many interpretations of this passage, but the reason why we have it on the first day of Holy Week, in connection with Jesus saying, Destroy this temple, and three days later, I will raise it up. And also the significance of its fragrance, the amount of money that it costs, all signify the value we are to put not on a building of bricks and mortar as the temple was, not even on a tent of meeting that the original tabernacle was, but the importance of Jesus' body. And, symbolically, Jesus' life. Jesus' life is the costliest thing in the world. And, as far as that room in Bethany was concerned, it was the costliest thing there. Now, there were other things of value there, obviously. There was Lazarus, who had just been raised from the dead. Lazarus, who was a very valuable brother to both Mary and Martha and to the community. Lazarus, whose witness had caused many to believe. 
But there is also this perfume of spikenard, and perfume is used for anointings, and specifically the spikenard that is used here was specifically for corpses. It was used because it was strong. It overcame the smell of decomposing flesh, and it was probably bought for the sake of Lazarus's burial. Remember the famous words that when Jesus asked the stone rolled away, they would say, Lord, he stinketh. And so many things that you would need would be something that could smell or overcome that smell. They didn't have the technology of um, odor reducing or odor eliminating things that we have today, but so basically you had to have another smell that overcomes the greater smell. And so it was stressed that this was spikenard, and it was stressed that it was a lot of it. In fact, the cost of it was the equivalent of a full year's wage. So we're talking, depending on people's salary, somewhere around forty, sixty thousand dollars Now, maybe some of you might see where I'm going with this. If we have tickets to a famous event, let's say like a concert or a Super Bowl, I've even heard of them lately going for something like that amount, which for some people is a year's wage. Unbelievable to have and value some one event that would be that much money or worth that much money. But once again, we have to ask the question, what is the most valuable thing in the world? And so, Judas even provides a proposal. It's mission. It's going out and serving those who are needy. Changing the lives of a significant amount of people. And we have programs to do that, both in the church and in non-government organizations and things like that. I know when I've talked to many people, when we've had discussions about where, if we get some extra money for mission donations, where should it go? Typical people would say the poor, although John is disparaging Judas for even thinking that. He want, doesn't want to give Judas an inch of integrity here. But Judas's answer, let's be fair, is actually a pretty good answer where you think it should go. But in regards to all of those things that we would value, that would be worth a year's wage, the most important and the most valuable thing in the room is the new temple, and specifically the body of Jesus. And not just the body of Jesus, the feet of Jesus, showing us the way that we are to walk, the way that we are to go forward. And Mary, not only giving up this year's worth of wage in perfume, Mary, who not only undignifiedly lowers her hair, shows obeisance, almost like a repentance and sackcloth, but more of a devotion to this person, this body, this new temple. She knows what is important, and Jesus is alerting us on this first Monday. He is important. His way is important. His Holy Week is important. It is important to give up not only a little bit, but a whole year's worth of wages, to give up your life. And that's why we repeat this event each and every year, to remember that Jesus is the center of our life or needs to be the center of our life. And all of these actions point to it. We might have other good missions that we can do because of this most valuable body like giving to the poor, like um, donating to good things. But the source of all of them is Jesus himself. And we need to follow him this holy week.
He's the new temple. He's the new center of focus. God bless you today. We trust that these continue to be words of encouragement. Take care. We'll see you tomorrow.